Hi, I'm Carl Franklin. In this episode of Blazor Train, I'll show you how to handle files. For example, resizing and uploading photos, or uploading large files with a progress bar, and even how to upload into a cloud storage service like Azure Blob Containers. First, I'm going to come through the Blazor server car and pass out speed passes to alert passengers who want to get to their destination as quickly as possible. Then I'll walk through the Blazor WebAssembly car and make sure all the client-side passengers can easily get to where they're going to, even if it takes a little longer. And that's all coming up right now, right here on Blazor Train! So I'm going to start with Blazor Server. This is a Blazor Server.NET 7 application called File Handling Server. And I'm going to start by adding a files folder. Next, I'm going to open up Program CS and I'm going to map a route to the files folder for files. There you go. So we're using the static file options with the file provider. It's a physical file provider. And we're looking at the files path and routing all requests from the URL with files to that path. Next, we're going to need some CSS for drag and drop. So I'm going to go to the CSS folder, get out old site CSS, and we'll add some stuff right down at the bottom. So here's a drop area, basically a panel that we can drop files onto. And then we have a different background color and color from when we're actually over it. And for the file input drop area, we're going to set the width of the entire drop area and set the opacity to zero, effectively making it invisible. And then also set the cursor to a pointer. All right, just a little bit of CSS, no big whoop. Next, I'm going to take over the index page. So we're gonna upload a file. I've got my div with the class drop area. And I also have this variable drop class so I can switch the class dynamically when I enter and leave. Then I have my input file. This is basically a Blazor file input component. And I can disable it based on a Boolean uploading. And I'm handling on drag enter and on drag leave to change that class. And then my on file input change handles when it changes. Now for uploading, I'm showing a progress bar with the uploaded bytes and the total bytes. And then I'm going to list out the files. And so I have this list of strings called file URLs, and I'm going to go find the files in that files folder and uh, get the URLs and then put them in a list. So for my code, I've got a Boolean when I'm uploading, I've got a message, the uploaded bytes, the total bytes, and there's the list of strings of file URLs. Talked about handle drag enter and drag leave basically setting this drop area drug, if I've already dragged or drug files to it. And so first thing I'm gonna do is disable the file input field, that's uploading, and then I'm going to call status change to re-render the page so that change gets seen immediately. Now I'm gonna calculate the number of chunks that we have to send. So here's the total bytes, file size, that's a long, I have a chunk size that I've arbitrarily set to 400k. So I have a number of chunks. If the total bytes is over 400k, I'll have at least one chunk. Or I'll have zero if it's under. And remainder is whatever's left. So now I'm getting the file name without the extension. It just has the name of the file. And I get the extension. And I create a new file name without the path by saying just file name with a dash, and now the current date's ticks value, which is really, really fine-grained, to string, which gives me a unique number in time. And then the extension. So that's my file name. Now with the path, I'm going to set that to the current directory, files, and then the new file name without the path. If it's there, which it probably isn't, I'm going to delete it. Now here's what's different. In the code that I had in the original episode 37, 
this is what we were doing before. We were creating a buffer the size of the chunks, chunk size, and then awaiting in-stream read async buffer zero buffer length. The problem is that this stopped working in .NET 6, and it wasn't writing the entire length of the buffer. Now my code creates a new memory of byte from the byte array, and then we use read async from the stream into that buffer, and that works. So here's the story. We get the input stream, we get the output stream. I made it a little bit more efficient by using a while statement. So while the uploaded bytes is less than the total bytes, we take what's left, and if it's less than the chunk size, the chunk size is the remainder. Read the next chunk, create a new memory of byte from that byte array. We read from the stream into that byte array. We write it out to our output file, and this is the key right here. However much data we've read, that's what gets returned. So we want to write what we've read. It's a little bit more precise. And the rest of it is the same. We're going to update our progress data in the UI, calculate the percent uploaded, report the progress, and we're just going to keep going until it's completed. So here's my list files method. I clear the list of strings, the file URLs. I get the files from directory get files. And I go through each one, and I get just the file name, not the path. And then the URL is going to be files slash and whatever the file name is. So let's try it. Now I'm going to take a file that I have in my file folder somewhere on my computer. It's a PNG file, and it's about a megabyte. And I'm going to copy it in here. Boom, upload complete. Now if I click it, boy, was I young. I'm old. Let's get a really big file. Here's an episode of Blazor Train, which is 1.6 gigs. That's what I'm talking about. It just keeps going. All right, let me speed up time for you. And there it is. Now, if I click this. Hi, I'm Carl Franklin. Well, what do you know? It works. Okay, let's move on to Azure. Let's upload a file to an Azure blob container. So I'm going to open the csproj file, and I'll add a new item group with a package reference, Azure Storage Blobs. Now, this is an older version, but it works really, really well. And my code works against it. So that's what I'm going to use. So since this is Azure, of course, we need some configuration. So I'm going to go to App Settings JSON, and while I'm not going to show you my secrets, I'm going to set it up so that you can put in your own secrets. So we have three variables, storage connection string, the storage base URL. So that's your storage URL. You can get all that in the portal and the container name. Next, I'm going to add a class to the data folder called Azure Storage Helper. So I'm injecting a configuration. I've got my base URL that I grab out of that. I have the file list which I'm using the uh, container get blobs async and looping through those and returning a list of strings. So that'll give me a list of all the blobs in the container. Then I have my upload file method uh, that's going to return a string. I have the container name, the source file name, the destination file name, and whether to overwrite. So this is all right out of the documentation. I have my blob upload options, the maximum transfer size, I set it to 50 megabytes. If the file's bigger than 50 megabytes, it'll be sent in 50 megabyte chunks. Then I'm going to get a blob client, and I'm going to delete the blob if it exists, if overwrite is passed in as true. Then I'm calling file open read with the source file name and getting a file stream from that. And then I'm calling blob upload async with the options and closing it. For downloading a file, you pass the container name and the source file name, the destination file name, get a blob client, download async, and then we create a file stream from file open write, and we say download.content copy to async that file stream and close it. And this open container just opens the container. We pass it a name, we get the storage connection string, and 
we open the container and return it. Next, let's open program CS. And we're going to add the service right here. And this is going to be scoped because we want a different one for every user. We don't want multiple users sharing this. OK, now we need to add the data namespace to underscore imports. And finally, let's add a new page called blob files. So this does the same thing that our file upload does to the point where we're done uploading it to the files folder. So let's go down here. And you can see we get the file, we get the extension, we upload the file. This is all exactly the same. But then we say we're sending it to Azure and we get all of our configuration. We call Azure Storage Helper Upload File. And then when we're done, we tell the user, delete the local file and we're done uploading. List the files. Okay, this is our index page where we left it. Now we have this Upload to Azure page. And I'm going to start by uploading that same young picture of me. There it is. Quick, done, boom. All right, now let's try a little bit bigger file. Uh, how about a WAV file that's 160 megabytes? Done. So there's the WAV file, and there's the PNG file. Trust me, it's there. OK, next stop, WASMland. So we're going to create a Blazor Web Assembly application, .NET 7, called File Handling WASM. We're going to make it ASP.NET Core hosted. And we're going to start by pretty much following the same path we did before. The only difference really is that instead of opening a file directly, we're going to create an API controller and we're going to call that API controller to upload chunks. So first in the server project, we'll create the file folder, files, and we'll go into program CS on the server. And remember we had to do this to map the files route to the files folder. Next, I'm going to open the csproj file for the server and add that Azure package. Next, we're going to add Azure Storage Helper to the server project. It's the same code that we used in Blazor Server. Next, we've got to go back to Program and add the Azure Storage Helper as a scope service. Next, we need a class that represents one chunk of a file. So I'm going to add that to Shared. File Chunk. File name without the path, the offset in the file, the data itself, and whether or not it's the first chunk. These are all things that we need to make it work. Next, we're going to go to the controllers folder and we're going to add files controller. So this is a controller that uses the Azure storage helper. And uh, I can get the list of blob files. I can delete a local file. OK, yep, yeah, we are saving to the files folder. Uh, I can copy a file to a container that's uploading to Azure. I can get a list of files in my local to the server files directory, and I can upload a file chunk, and that's going to be a post. All right, let's go to the client, to the csproj file, and we'll include a couple of packages, Newtonsoft JSON, SystemNet HTTP JSON, which we're going to need. Now I'm also going to need a service on the client to call the API. So I'm going to call it a files manager. I'll just add files manager CS. So we're injecting our HTTP client that has the base address to the server. And then we have methods for getting the file names from the server, getting blob URLs from the server, deleting a file on the server, uploading from the server files file directory to Azure blob storage, and uploading a chunk. So in the client, let's go to program CS and we'll add the files manager as a scoped service. Okay, now let's go to app CSS and add that same CSS code that we had before for the drag and drop support. Going to go to underscore imports and add these three namespaces. 
file handling wasm shared system io microsoft extensions configuration now we're ready to start taking over some pages so let's start with index this all is very familiar to you i'm sure except when we get down here to the file we're reading data from the input stream just like before but we don't access a local file right we can't do that what we're doing is uploading and we have that same while loop as before we're reading data into the buffer and then we're creating a file chunk object and uploading that file chunk and the rest of it is updating the progress saying upload complete so if you look in the files controller in upload chunk this is for uploading to the local server files folder right so for every chunk we're going to open the file for writing seek write close the file so the file doesn't remain open in case the upload gets interrupted uh, we may not have all the data but at least if the data gets there it'll go to the right place in the file and the file won't be locked all right that's just for regular uploads now let's add our blob files page okay so just as before we're uploading we're uploading we're uploading creating the file chunk now once we've completed that now we do the same thing we did before which was that we upload to azure and there on the manager we're calling copy file to container which sends the message to the server to hey take that file that i just uploaded and copy it to the container and here's the container name now just as before i'm going to delete counter and fetch data i really got to start using the empty template and that means weather forecast here and everything else should be good now let's change that nav menu upload file to server upload file to azure and i also have to delete weather forecast controller on the server don't need that all right let's try it all right let's start with that young picture of me and i i think i was in my 40s but man what a difference 15 years makes huh okay and let's try a big file how about an mp4 file that's 65 megs there it is all right azure let's upload the picture there it is and the 64 megabyte wave file mp4 file so there you go you can upload large files whether you're using blazor webassembly or blazor server and pass those on up to an azure blob storage container doesn't get much better than that now back to you in the studio carl you know, uploading a file is a lot like sending your BFF to the cafe car for a freshly microwaved hot dog. It always comes back with mustard on it. Hey, thanks for riding the rails with me today. This is where I jump off. I'll see you next time. Blaze a train!